on the platform is our chef for next week. Some of you may not have seen her before. So I'm going to introduce um, Stephanie to just say a quick hi so that you can get to see her face and know who to expect, um, what we're going to get some amazing delights from next week. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Stephanie. So if you haven't met me before, uh, that's I'm I'm her. <laughs> um, I worked with Jason for um, several months. So that's how I kind of got involved with um, with you guys. And so um, next week, I'm going to be doing um, soup, salads and sandwiches for, you know, it's nice when it's cold weather like this to have stuff like that. But the main focus I'm doing um, for an ingredient specifically is sunflower seeds. Um, because it's a super healthy ingredient and you might think, oh, sunflower seeds in a sandwich, that sounds kind of weird. But tune in next week and you will see how you can do all these things and give some really good, healthy um, plant-based recipes for the fall and the winter. Great, great. Thank you so much, Stephanie. We're looking forward to that one. Um, so today's show, we're going to be it's called indulgent delights, okay? Take from that what you mean, but mainly stay in tune, take from that what you, what you understand, but mainly stay tuned to see what kind of delights we're gonna get you to indulge in. But before we go any further, I'm just gonna ask Janine if she could do our disclaimer for today. Can you see that? Can you see the screen? Uh, it's just sharing at the moment. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so our TTI disclaimer, only a physician can diagnose, treat and prescribe for illness or disease. Any information disclosed or discussed at the TTI Zoom talk show is for educational and informational purposes only. Please continue to seek professional medical advice mm -hmm. from your general practitioner regarding any illness or disease you may be suffering from. Thank you, Janine. I'm just going to leave the screen share on for now, just because we've got so we've had so much activity this week um, due to the homework that was set for us last week. So just so that, let's see. So those of you who missed last week, we had two amazing dishes. The first one being the quinoa and apple breakfast bowl and our challenge for the, the week we're now finishing um so started last week is was to make some of the dishes that were displayed demonstrated for us so that was the one that uh, louise made louise mcqueen the quinoa and apple breakfast bowl and um well we had three challenges so one was to make that one was to make the second dish and the third one was to look at um to research our oils so i'll just show you um, some examples of what the ladies, because this these these demos came up, or these examples came up in the women's WhatsApp group. That's a reminder also that we do have a women's WhatsApp group if you're coming on this platform for the first time, and a men's WhatsApp group, and a spiritual health WhatsApp group. And we are looking to um, go into, is it Telegram, Janine? Yeah, it is Telegram. We're just looking at the logistics of that and how that's going to work. But yeah, it is Telegram that we're looking to use potentially. Yeah, so keep your eye on the chat because there will be some links to the various WhatsApp groups coming up in there as well. So on the screen, we have the, um, the, the homework presented by Bernadette and Patricia Noel. So that was their version of the apple and quinoa breakfast bowl. We also have, uh, oh, my version there, that's using tricolour quinoa and MF. I'm not sure your name, MF, but that's what you're saved on my phone as. That was using more milk. And we also, oh, and the second dish was the alkaline coconut quinoa and sweet potato curry. So this is Louise's um, final, final um, product, final product. Could you call it product? It looks good, yeah? This is her demo, the end of her demo. And the efforts that came through. So we have quite a few here from our sister, Nosi Conjoweo. 
excuse me for my pronunciation. <laughs> okay, quite a few efforts. These look so colorful and I know that they were tasty because she told us they were, <laughs> okay? And lots of people thought, you know what, I've got to get the cooking as well. So we also have the efforts of Olive Simmons, we've got Bernadette, we've got Audrey. Uh, yeah, are you getting excited? <laughs> okay. And we also have Joe. Now Joe did a Joe did a twist on this. She actually, for her second attempt, she changed the quinoa to wholemeal spaghetti, and she said it tasted fantastic. So there you, you This is a, what you've got in store for today. This is an example, okay? Because this was last week's show. If you missed it, you can always go back onto um, YouTube and type in True Temperance International and you'll see it there along with all our other programs. Um, ah, and we also had on the program, so Jenny spoke about making your own hummus. Did you have a go at this, Janine? Oh, I didn't, Sean, I'm afraid. I'm, I might try it this week. It depends what Alvin does because I might have too much to try. <laughs> but fortunately <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I hear you, I hear you. So Jenny posted her recipe and a few of the ladies decided that they were going to give it a try as well. So we've got all these that I tell you, the lady, I'm not sure what's been going on on the men's group, but I know the ladies have been very, very active. And then they, the food was like flowing. So there were other dishes that were shared on the women's WhatsApp groups. We've got a noodle and vegetable soup. There was a couple of versions of that. Someone wanted to know, what can I do with aubergine? And then there were image photos of an aubergine or some places call it eggplant casserole. There was a smoothie. What was in the smoothie, Janine? Do you remember? Um, I don't, I can take a look, but I don't remember what was in that one. It's okay, it's okay. Then there was a, another breakfast and the red kidney bean soup and a rice with vegetables, including kale. So there was so much, good. that one came on last night, uh, not last night, earlier on yesterday. So there was a lot of activity going on. And the other challenge was to research your plant-based oils, how to use them, why to use them, when are they beneficial, when are they harmful and all of that. So Janine, should we um, let, invite people to unmute so that they can uh, let us know how they got on with their research on oils or yeah. even those who, those who cooked but didn't, weren't able to share their, share their photos probably they enjoyed it so much they forgot to take the picture <laughs> yeah it'd be good to hear from them definitely i think everyone should be unmuted yeah and alvin is going to talk to us a little bit more about the oils at the end when he's finished the cooking um for this week so but let's see if anybody did their homework well we know they did clearly did anybody have a go at the oils research yes mrs conjueo you can speak are you able to unmute yes hi there everyone um hi. this is actually mrs conjueo's daughter mama laudi so mom has uh, joined the group and she's been sharing frequently what they're doing we've been cooking breakfast together and all of those and when it came to the oils um research and homework she had to do she shared with me that Using olive oil for, we used to mainly use it for frying and cooking, was actually incorrect. We're not supposed to be frying using olive oil. And since then, we've made a switch. So we now fry using coconut oil and we use our olive oil for our salads. So we'll drizzle that on our salads and we have it raw instead of using it for frying. So that's what we learned on our side. Fantastic. fantastic. I must admit, I've been using a lot more coconut oil this week as well. Before I never really liked the taste, but now it's it's fine. Especially when I know that it's better for me than any of the other oils. So thank you for that, Mrs. Con I've forgotten how you say your name. Ma Ma oh, it's Mama Laoji. Mama Laoji, thank you. Thank you for your, <laughs> your yes, feedback there. Okay. Did anybody else try the uh, research? or change the oils that you're using or the way that you're using the oils? Because I know a lot of people like to fry, like the crispiness. Anyone else? 
I do have a question. This is Emmanuel. Oh, um, hi, Emmanuel. Hi. Um, there was a scripture in the Bible, a passage when um, Elijah went to the lady that has a, a little bit of flour left and a little bit of oil. Now, I want to know what type of oil were they using back then? And if we, we can use olive oil to make bread. Does anyone that's, have any idea? That's a good question because that's not one that I've ever even considered. Um, I don't know if anyone else has an answer. Do you? I would think that it was olive oil just because they had so much of that in that area, right? That's a very um, common crop in that area. And I think the issue with, the, with frying with olive oil is that it has a very low smoke point and it becomes carcinogenic if we heat it like that. Um, if you're making it with putting it in bread, um, you're not heating it to the same temperature as you would if you're frying it. Okay, okay thank so, you. Yeah, thanks for that, yeah. Thank you. I also use, um, in, like in baking, you can substitute applesauce for oil in recipes and that works really well. I haven't done it with bread, of course, but like muffins or cakes or things like that, you can put applesauce in instead of oil and it replaces the fat quite nicely. Okay. Interesting. Thanks, yeah. I actually use apple oil and sorry, applesauce instead of the eggs. That can be used like really nicely in a banana loaf as a replacement for eggs using applesauce. But I've never used it for oil. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think that's possibly everyone that's going to say something about the challenge. Maybe, I don't know, maybe somebody else will. But just to let you know, also, Tomorrow, starting tomorrow, Golden Palms Cookery School, that's the school that Alvin and Louise run, they are doing a cooking uh, class, which starts tomorrow. So the promotion is there on the screen. Alvin will let us know a little bit more about it, but it's there on the screen. So you could get your cameras out, do a screenshot or, or whatever device you have. So the information is on there for the cooking show. So. That's all I have to say on the on the promotion for that. So, yes. Yeah, so, I'm I'm Janine. Do you think Alvin's ready for us yet, or if not, is there anything else anybody else would like to share with us with their feedback? Um, I'm not sure if he's ready. However, there are two comments in the chat. Um, okay. So, going back to your previous comment about the taste of coconut oil, and you didn't really like it before. So, mm -hmm. Stacy said it depends on what brand you use. So, some of them are strong, and some of them are quite faint. Um, and another lady called Jackie said that she also did the challenge as well. So we've got those comments in the chat. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I'm sure you enjoyed your, which one did you, are you able to unmute Jackie to let us know if you did the breakfast bowl or the curry, the quinoa curry, no. alkaline quinoa curry? Hi, Hi it's Jackie. I was looking up um, the homework on researching different oils and I came across something with grapeseed oil. Um, I didn't realize there's quite a few side effects. And I was mentioning some of them like using grapeseed oil, diarrhea, upset stomach, nausea, vomiting, dry mouth, sore throat, headaches. And I thought, can that oil do so much? So I've got some more research to do, but it was quite an interesting finding that out. So was that, was that looking at the benefits of grapeseed oil? I was looking at both, like, the, no, the ben, um, which oh. kind of oil you should be using um, and if there's any benefits. And then I came across something that said side effects. So I was looking at that and made a note of that. And I was just really right. comparing, yeah, can canola, more rapeseed, and mm -hmm. where does it come from? And where, what do they do with it? And when I came across that with so many side effects, that was quite... Oh, wow. Yeah, that was quite... I'm still going to do some more research. <laughs> I know for grapeseed oil, I tend to use that as for skin, um, for skin health. So um, like massaging or, um, or even just on my, on my face um, instead of um, the tox, well, the, the, the lotions and stuff, the different things that are in the lotions. You don't even know what's in there. 
um, unless you make it yourself. Um, someone's asking, is avocado oil okay? It's fine to drizzle on your salad, to have with your salad, like if you're making, we did a demo several months ago using making your own mayonnaise and Edgar did that one with avocado oil. And I think he may have used a bit of sesame oil in that as well. I'm not sure, I can't remember. Um, but the take home message from last week was for cooking, the oil that you would use would be coconut, not any other plant-based oil because they denature when the temperatures get to you know high and basically you change the properties of the oil when you heat it. But I'm sure Alvin will let us know a bit more. So Janine, do you think we're ready to go over to the kitchen of the McQueen family now? <laughs> I hope so, let's see. Alvin, are you there? I am here. Um, hang on, hang on. Okay, I'm let me stop the... screen sharing, sorry. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, can you all see me? Can you all hear me? Hello. Yes, here. We can, yeah. we can, we can, we can, we can. Wow, good to have you all this evening. It's a pleasure to have you in the kitchen again one more time. And uh, I've got lots of goodies in here to show you all tonight. And uh, Louise is perhaps going to just drop the camera down a little bit so you can have a look at some of the goodies that we got. And uh, she's going to come a little closer into uh, the cauliflower. So tonight, this is what, while Louise is showing you some of the things, if I point to them individually, uh, this is going to be my first dish. We're going to have on. a, a See garlic. if there's any headphones next door. Uh, Hello. So we're just going to need to ask people to mute their, mute their um, devices. And we, when you're ready, Alvin, we'll pull, put the um, title of your food on the screen wonderful thank you so louise is just going to do a scan sweep around the table very quickly so you can see a lot of different things on the table um and i hope uh, uh you can see different things and we're going to get to them individually but i just want to get your visualization on this um Mmm, that's looking healthy. Isn't that something interesting? He is looking very healthy indeed. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, without much further ado, I'm going to ask um, Sharon and the others to place the first dish up, which we're going to be doing. It's a roasted garlic and cauliflower soup. Now, normally during my presentations, I tend to go through all of the nutritional content, but I'm going to get a little difficult tonight. You know why? Because I want you to take control and responsibility and accountability for your health, your life, your health. So I want you to, instead of just eating for the sake of eating and just, can you all see me? Am I frozen? You are frozen, Alvin. Okay. I oh, know you're moving now. You're moving. <laughs> we can see you in the little box in the corner. We've got your slides up on the screen. You got the slides up on the screen, okay? Yeah. All right, so the slides on the screen. So for those of you who are looking at the slides, what are you seeing? Roasted cauliflower soup and your ingredients. Cauliflower soup, okay? And those are the ingredients that are there. So I want you to take a shot of that. And then I want you to go down to the instructions afterwards and you need to take a shot of that. We'll give people a few more seconds to take a picture. There's people in the chat saying that they tried the breakfast bowl. Another person said they made the food. I think it was Diana, if I remember, um, but she didn't take a photo, but that's okay. The main thing is that you're enjoying the new tastes. Okay, I'm well, moving on to the instructions now. And the instructions will be a little different the way how I'll be doing it this evening, but that's for your guide. Um, I'll be doing mine a little differently, um, obviously for uh, speed and time, but it would not be too far off what you have there at that point in time. So just put that as a guide for you all, which would keep you paced in the kitchen 
and to get your flavors out. Mine is going to be moving a little more swift, but it's going to be in time for you all to watch what I'm doing. Okay. We can put the, um, we'll put the recipe and the instructions in the WhatsApp groups anyway um, afterwards. So if we're ready to carry on with the cooking, is that all right, uh, Alvin? Wonderful. So we're going to get cooking straight away. So um, if you can take the screen share down so Louise will be able to visualize her camera. Um, if she's having some little technicalities. Okay. So we're going to go down to the chopping of the, uh, the floret. So how are we going to do this? We turn the floret upside down like this. And the different ways you can do this just to get some of the things chopped into ones. As you can see what I'm doing. You can take it down. Notice my fingers. I'm not going to cut all of this on the table. Can we all see my hands? It's roughly chopped. I want to even this out a little bit on the table so you all can have. And this is going to go into my tray. And I'm going to roast this off in a little bit so that you can have move this big chunk away from the screen. All right, so I'm putting this over. I'm putting this over on my side here. Then I'm going to go over to my onion. I'm going to take my time because I've got three dishes. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Can Alvin, can you tell us? Can you tell us a little bit about the um, benefits of cauliflower? Oh, interesting that you should ask me that. Now, as I said to you, I'm not going to tell you everything. But why do you think? Let me ask the audience. Why do you think it's in the cauliflower? Why do you think it's in cauliflower? I can see men if you all run into your phones. I can't even see it, but I know I can feel it. That you all are running to your phones. <laughs> are you able to unmute people? I know it doesn't have a strong taste. Okay. So some of the nutritional components of that is someone says it. someone says calcium. Ooh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was on me because there is just something. While they while they're finding it, I'm gonna be chopping. Okay, I'm going back to my chopping. Okay. Fiber. Fiber, yes. Put that aside. Calcium. Someone else has said vitamin K. Interesting. Now, this is your homework. So, as I told you, I'm not going to tell you everything, but you got also B6 in there. You got magnesium. You got you got um, vitamin A in there also. Yes. Yes, you have. I can see somebody checking their phones. <laughs> That's good. I want you to check everything. Don't take nobody's word for it. I want you to do it for yourself. It also has iron in there. Iron, small portions of iron. And this is all going on to my tray. As you can see this, I'm using a little spoon now. Taking from this, I have some coconut oil. So you have the coconut oil here. So I'm going to put some of the coconut oil, drizzle this in between with my fingers. That's like this. You can all see this. I'm going to put this around. Just little nuggets around. Once it gets into the oven, it will melt down beautifully. Sorry, I was just going to say that that reminds us that coconut oil is solid at room temperature, but yes, then when it the heat gets to it, it um, liquefies. Oil. 
And now I've got my garlic. Now, some ways in which you can do a garlic, you can either crush it down like that, and it would normally spin really quickly. And you notice, and for mine, I'm just gonna and drizzle it in between. I wanna get some flavors going on here for this one. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going straight into the oven. But before I do that, I'm gonna add my onions on top. Normally I would put my onions into uh, the pan, but I'm gonna make it a little change today so that you all can see a different way of doing it. But the way you can do it is to saute your onions off with the inside of the, uh, the, the pan with a little bit of oil, but I'm gonna roast these here to, today so that you can all see the different kind of flavors that you can get for this while you're doing it. So all of this is going on in between and it's straight in the oven. Alvin, someone asked if you could share what brand of coconut oil that you're using. What brand? Okay, hold on a second. I like your top, your chef's top with the Golden Palms logo on the back and the front. It's looking pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so that's... That's one of them that you can have, okay? Yeah. It's a raw, raw virgin uh, yeah. coconut oil, yeah. Yeah, so that's, the one, that's the one I use. Okay, wonderful, all right? Yeah. Um, Holland and Barrett has them, things. and um, yes, you can get I'll them there. To put that on. And there's others that I can share on the end uh, of the presentation for the series that you can watch. So setting that aside, while that is roasting right now in the oven, you've noticed I've got some bay leaves here and a few more herbs. Do you remember what you saw on the screen, ladies and gentlemen? You don't remember? Can you see what I have there? Bay leaf and uh, uh, oregano. Time. Yes, yeah, time. Time. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put that aside. You mean? Mm. I'm gonna put that aside for you. If my cut, cause we're gonna add some stock and everything afterwards. So I'm gonna follow that through. But now I'm gonna go to my second dish. While that is happening in the oven, I'm gonna go over to my second dish. Now, most of you all have always seen a roast. Now, <laughs> most of you have gluten, you know, the heavy gluten roast where you have the gluten flour. But I wanna show you something that's different that you can deal with um at this particular point in time so Sharon if you can put the slide up for me uh on the roast I'd appreciate that if you can put the slide up for me on the roast um so that everybody can see the ingredients um then I would like everybody to see that take a snapshot of it as we go through that individually okay if you can unmute sorry if you can mute your phones mute your devices again please so on the screen now, we have the nut roast recipe. Would you like me to read through the ingredients? Please, can you mute your devices? Or we'll, yeah. Admin, could you just, uh... thank you. So the rest of the ingredients we have for the nut roast recipe, Janine, are you able to go through that one? Okay, I'll go through. We've got two cups Sorry, of water. Or difficulties. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can do the next one. Two cups of water, half a cup of yeast flakes, one dried onion, three diced garlic cloves, one tablespoon of mixed herbs, one tablespoon of mixed seeds, two tablespoons of mixed nuts, two tablespoons of chestnuts, one cup of liquid aminos, and two and a half cups of oats. Okay, I'll let you um, okay. tell us a bit more about that. Or do you want us to go on to the um, well, yes. the You can go on to the instructions and show them the instructions. They can take a snapshot of that. And then I'm going to go straight to show you the ingredients. 
Okay. So the in instructions. Put water in a saucepan with onions, yeast, flakes, garlic, mixed herbs, and liquid aminos. Bring to the boil, then add seeds, chestnuts, the nuts and oats, cook until it's firm to stir. Place in a loaf tin with parchment paper and bake for about 30 minutes. It sounds so simple. Take it out of the oven and leave it to stand for 15 minutes. Okay, I'll stop the screen share. Wow, that was beautiful, Sharon. Thank you so, so much. Now, we're going to take the camera right now so you can see exactly what we were talking about uh, here as we can look at it. So you got two cups of water. I've got it in this little pitcher. You have your, your uh, cup of liquid aminos, as you can see right here. Mixed herbs. Can you I also have the amino? Is that? Brags is brains, yeah? Liquid amino. So I want you, I'm not, not going to tell you, and that's the reason why, because I'm giving you some homework to do, right? So write it down, aminos, okay? So I want you to do some homework. Okay. It must be something with amino acids. Oh, yes. <laughs> we got some uh, uh, garlic cloves that is going to be diced in a moment. Um, you're going to have the onion that is about to be diced, and you have your mixed seeds. So in these seeds, you must realize that you got pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds. So you got your omega-3s right there. So you got zinc, magnesium, manganese, potassium. So it's all in this. So zinc, magnesium, manganese that is coming out of these seeds. Then you've got your uh, yeast flakes. Now, this is the nutrition. This is B12. This is rich in vitamin B12. Um, wow. that, and we need to look at how does that work for your body, Okay. Then the other thing that we have is chestnuts. Ooh, awesome, Chen. What do you think of chestnuts? Okay, I'm going to give you some nutritional components. You got vitamin A, you got potassium, you got magnesium again. So that's in that, but there's more ingredients for that. So I want you to see that very carefully. So let's get cooking, and I'm going to take this away. So right now, I'm going to place two cups of water into my pan. One cup of uh, liquid aminos. You seen that? Mix herbs. And now I'm going to get chopping on my onion so that we can take some time with that. And I tend to use red onions a lot. Why? Because they're rich in anti as antioxidant. Anything that is red, you've got um, red cabbage, uh, red onions. These things work very, very well for your body. Notice I'm slowing down so that I can take my time with you all. The reason being, like Louise last week, who was moving at 90 miles an hour because she had less dishes to do, I want to make sure but you capturing everything that I'm doing this afternoon. I know you capture with these two, but I'm a little slower than she did this evening for veritable reasons. Okay, so we're going to take this, and one of the ways in which you can dice your onion, you can take it in this way, again, again. Alvin? Yes? Um, we've got a question in the chat about what can you use if you're allergic to nuts for the nut roast? You can just use seeds. You can just stick to the seeds. You don't necessarily have to use uh, nuts at all. Would that be like sunflower seeds? Those types sunflower of seeds, seeds, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds. And you can also use lentils as a base for a heavy consistency. Okay, got that? Notice how, notice the simplicity of these cutting. Notice, what did I do? Put that aside. That goes into my pan. And last but not least, you can, for those of you who have a garlic mincer at home, you can do that. But I just want to do it this way so you can have it. So I'll put my garlic on the table. 
snapping it down for you. Um, someone's oh, also asking what temperature is the oven on? For the what temperature? Fire. Yeah. Is the oven on? 180. Was that 180? Yes. Okay. Notice. I can even, I, even if I want to do it this day. Into my pan. And my pan goes over now, it's on. I'll leave that now to cook for a while and you bring it to the boil. While this is while this is uh, getting to a boiling consistency, I'm going to take you over now because I'm going to add some things that um, I, I, Sharon has got on the slides. I'm going to add some carrots, some parsnips um, to this. While this is coming to the boil, before I add my other ingredients, I'm going to cut some vegetables and also put them on to roast. So you're going to have some carrots, some parsnips, and also I'm going to cook off um, and saute down some. Uh, Here I go, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I, I had that gone crazy in my head for a moment. Brussels sprouts. So I'm gonna put that all to roast because when you roast it, you get a the flavor. The you know, flavor and also the consistency of the, the nutrients stays in. So get into the habit of roasting your veg or steaming your veg. So it's gonna be a lot better. So while that is doing mm -hmm. over there, Louise is gonna come back around the table and I'm gonna share a moment with you in dealing with just cutting uh, some of the uh, parsnips and the carrots. And also I want you to, to, to understand what is in the carrots and what's in the parsnips. So while I'm chopping, um, I want you to be start checking your your, your insight into what's in the parsnips and what's in carrots and also what's in Brussels sprouts. It's, it's so important for you to understand what is going inside of your gut. It's very important what you nourish your body with is you become what you eat. So stay with me now. As Louise go back around and bring the camera down, we're going to look exactly at chopping some of these parsnips and chopping some of these sprouts for you. Alvin, while you're doing that, there's also a question about what can you eat with nut roast? What can you eat with nut roast? So this is why we're doing the vegetables. We're going to do the roasted vegetables, which is going to be the parsnips, the carrots, and we're going to have the, the, the Brussels sprouts. So all of these is, is going to go into uh, on a baking tray. So I'm going to chop them up. Just roughly chop them for you. And you can go and saute that off. I'm going to do the onion separately. Um, and then I'm going to put that together so that you have that together. While I'm keeping an eye on my uh, florets in the, in, the, in the oven and they're coming on real nicely. Okay, what about... had... Go on, Jean. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask another question that's in the chat about soaking seeds. Is it best to, if you're going to be using seeds for the nut roast, is it best to soak them? You, 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 if, if you, you, you soak the seeds, um, mm -hmm. it is, you wouldn't get that the, with the seeds that tends to um, mellow down or moisten out. Um, and you will find that a lot of the ingredients in the seeds would then end up into the water that you're going to be pouring away. So it's best to actually do the seeds fresh. It would release um, enzymes once it's in the pot or, or once it's um, ready to cook. So that's the better way for me in, um, in dealing with the seeds. Yeah, if it is nuts, on the different hand, on the contrary, then you need to soak some of the nuts and everything like that overnight. Yeah. Especially uh, things like cashew nuts. Uh, you, you need to soak those things like that overnight. So we can talk about that as we go through. So I'm just chopping down these things here. That's really nice and slow. I don't want to be moving too fast. So you all get excited and then get in the kitchen and start chopping your fingers off. So notice I'm holding these things either side so that I got the knife centered in the middle and I can get it down. So I'm, um, keeping control of my knife at all times and I'm not chopping my fingers off. There's other ways in which you can do it also. That's another thing on the knife skill class. Okay. okay, Alvin, we have had someone in the chat respond to your challenge of 
finding out what is good in the different vegetables. So Stacy said parsnips are a great source of fiber, vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate. Ooh. And what is folate good for, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I know you are. I can't make it easy for you now. Come on. It's got to be something that's got to make it hard for you all. Yeah? Magnesium. Magnesium. Okay. Is that right? Well, it's good for magnesium. <laughs> A good source of magnesium. Okay. <laughs> I, think. I think magnesium is good for your nerves. Your nervous system, I think. It's interesting. I said I say folate and everybody's telling me magnesium. Strange. Folate is good for um I the iron, iron in your body. It's good for iron in your body. Iron. So I'm just, I'm just roughly chopping them down. Thank you so much for those who have just added. I'm just roughly chopping them down. It's, it, they're bulky, but that's fine. Alvin, those vegetables look so nice. The colors, you know what? All the colors as well that we can see in there, the colors have different properties, don't they? Yes. Thank you, Sharon. You Someone inside. says folate is iron and it's also good Amen. pregnancy for the, uh, for the um, child developing. Folate? Yeah, don't they give um, women folic acid? Is it folic acid tablet or something like that in your for early stages, the first trimester of pregnancy? Folic acid. Okay, while you're, you're going to, I'm, I'm loving this class at the moment because you guys are doing, you're studying. You're actually enjoying what you're actually seeing in front of you. But you're also taking stock of what that you put inside of your mouth each and every single time that you're eating at home and doing the things you're doing. Now you've noticed everything again is on my tray. Mm -hmm. And taking a little bit of Himalayan salt. I'm gonna drizzle over this. And I'm just gonna use a little nugget again of coconut oil in between, just a little bit, just to melt it down and just grease the pan, pan slightly, though not too much. And ladies, I just want to let you know that for those of you who are taking coconut oil, you do not need a lot of coconut oil when you're cooking or when you're baking anything, unless you're doing the large quantities, then you up a little bit. But for, for your frying, and, and your, when you're sauteing anything off, you just use a little bit, as I said, you can, do also um, water and onions to so sweat your onions down without using oil. But if you're using oil with herbs and uh, or the, the coconut oil with all the herbs, all you need is a quarter teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon of, uh, of coconut oil to put into your uh, pan when you're sauteing your onions off. And that would be sufficient. It would just lightly grease the pan. Are we getting there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's looking good. That's that's sounding good. I'm seeing some steam rising behind you. That nothing's yes, burning, I'm is it? Right now. I'm just putting this straight in. Thank you so oh, okay. Much. Um, Ooh. can you just tell us a little bit about because you've mentioned the, the Himalayan sea salt, the Himalayan salt. Um, I'm familiar with that. Um, the pink Himalayan salt, but maybe not all our viewers uh understanding why is it that you use Himalayan salt and not table salt that's readily available. Himalayan salt is um, mineral rich. Because of the, the level where the Himalayas is, the, the salt is not contaminated like the other salt. Most of the salt that you have at in the stores, um, you use that like the Paxo salt and uh, all of these cheap salts that you found in Walmart and in, in, in Target and also in, in Asda and Sainsbury's, all of that cheap salt, that is good to um, wash your sink and your toilets and to wash vegetables and fruit with, but not to cook with, because a lot of that, the process of that is packed with aluminum and a whole lot of other things that would affect your endocrine system. So I want you to understand from an organ perspective, your endocrine system 
that is something that you should not use. So, but we're going to talk more about that. Let's get over to my demo part. Now, now you're seeing here, as you can see, Sharon, it's steaming. That water is looking beautiful. Um, so I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients now while Louise is over there. I'm bringing my ingredients over. I'm going to put some of the, the oats in. My nuts, my seeds. Someone says, what about black salt? I know I, I use black Himalayan salt. I think maybe if that if it's that what they if that's what they mean, then yeah, you can use black Himalayan as well. That's rich in minerals. What I'm gonna do here as well for the moment, I'm gonna just just quickly roughly chop some of my chestnuts. You don't have to. Just want to chop them down a little bit. This in halves, or you can do it a little smaller than this. And even if you want to do it again, you can crush it down if you're if you want to make it a little bit more. Now this can go right into my pan. So Alvin, we did have a question about oats. Um, is it best to soak your oats before you use them? You can do. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Depending on what I do. Overnight. I'm just adding a little bit more water and then I'm gonna put this out of this, my nutritional yeast. So Sorry, can you, can you just say that again, Alvin, because you froze and we missed what you said before the nutritional yeast. I said, yes, before I said, you can actually soak your oats um, uh, overnight in certain instances, depending on what dish that you're actually making. But if for this dish, I need to make sure that I keep it a, a sticky consistency in order for to bind hope you can see that now. Can you see that? I'll bring it over for you. End of the light, can you all see that? It's definitely cooked off until it's almost pretty stiff. Yeah, we can now see that, Alvin. Wonderful. Now I'm going to bring it over to my tray and I'm going to put it into my parchment tray. Okay, there's quite a few questions coming through with regards to salts. We can take them at the end so we can focus on the, th well, he's making three dishes actually. Yes. Um, if there's anything that we haven't covered yet, we'll try our best to cover them at the end. What Louise is, is in the kitchen like? and she also, Louise is in the kitchen and, and all I can hear her whispering it smells delicious. Uh, she forgets she's on the camera. <laughs> well, I was just asking, what does it smell like? I mean, give us a, give us, I wish it was smelly telly right now. <laughs> oh man, I can, um, ask Stephanie, I know Stephanie's on and she can tell you about chestnuts now. Come on, Steph, give them a hint about the chestnuts. So Stephanie's up next week. So I want you to get familiar with Stephanie. Come on, Steph. Unfortunately, Stephanie's just had to, um, to, disappear. Had to disappear. Remember, okay. the, the times in Canada are a bit different Canada. to us, and she's got something else that she's had to zoom over to or fly over Chestnuts. to. Chestnuts, when you hear the word nuts, 
What do you think the flavor is? Mm, nutty. <laughs> Taste it down a little bit. It's very aromatic. It's have a beautiful aromatic flavor, aromatic smell. Mm -hmm. And uh, the consistency is very crunchy on the salivary glands. It activates your salivary glands. So it's beautiful. This is going now straight into the oven. That's the rest of my vegetables. Do you get the chestnuts from your regular supermarket? You can buy these if I will show you one of the brands that you can get uh, at the end of the presentation um, and give you some of the supermarkets, both in the UK, the United States. And uh, for those who are joining from Qatar and from Dubai, I'll be able to give you some information on that also. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. Wonderful. So I'm going to put my part aside. For those on YouTube, um, Lindsay's just said Tesco sell them. For those on Zoom, you can see in the chat there's comments coming through. All right, here we go. People are still joining us now, even though we're halfway through the cooking. That's wonderful. But just to remind you, if you have missed some of this, you can always go back and watch this on YouTube. Um, yep, yeah, Jason's coming in now as well. You can always go back and watch this on YouTube and um, see what you've missed because one dish has already, uh, what was it, the, the soup? I've forgotten what we started with now. <laughs> Cauliflower. What was the first? Oh, it's, this is the first dish, the roasted cauliflower. Yeah, and then we're going, back, and, so we're going back to our roasted cauliflower. As you can see how beautiful it looks. It is nicely done. It's got the, the do you remember what I put in there? Do you all remember what I placed in there? Garlic, onion. Onion, garlic, garlic oil. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. So and now thyme. I'm going to add, I'm going to add my thyme. Bay leaf. Bailey, add time. And then, of course, I'm going to add. You can buy what all after, around that. After the bailey stands. That was the bailey. And I had some time in there. And yeah. what I'm doing now is you, you can you can get the, the vegan stocks. Or you can also make your own stock with vegetables, but I'm using a vegan stock and I'm adding Thank some of the pan up to the boil and to get the flavor going. So for those of you who are joining us later, we've this is the um, the two dishes we've started with is um, the cauliflower roasted cauliflower soup. And we have been working, well, I say we, you know, Alvin's been doing all the work um, on a <laughs> nut loaf. And the recipes have gone up, but we will share them with you in the WhatsApp group. And we can, we can share them at the end as well. So if you know this, all I've done is to put it in, I do not need to bring this to the boil. You know why? It's a little bit of, it's a little bit of hot water that I placed in there. But the reason why I don't need to bring it to the boil, could anybody tell me? The nutrients will go. Because Ooh, you, you, thank because you so you, much. Who said that? Me. Esther. Okay, me wonderful. Goes. The nutrients will go. So, ladies uh -huh. and gentlemen, I'm going to show you now what I'm about to do with this. I'm going to take the spoon out, and I'm going to go to my little blitzer. You all have this at home. Exactly. And I'm going to blitz this down now and make it absolutely unique. Yeah. I pulled the wrong plug out. Can't see him. Yeah, we'll have to mute our mic so that we can see.
I'm gonna leave that for a moment so that it can just marinate just for a little bit while. So the bay leaf, the bay leaf was put on the side. So while I was blitzing this, I had the bay leaf. As you can see, the bay leaf is still here. There's a whole bay leaf is still on the side. So I just blitz it around it, and I'm gonna leave the bay leaf on the inside so that it infused for a little bit longer. Then I'm gonna remove the bay leaf so that you don't eat that. Um, this is for infusion. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, let's do a recheck. Why did we do this afternoon? We had the soup. We had the soup. I'm gonna get over and recheck. We have the soup. So what was the ingredients in the soup? Do you all remember? Yeah. We had garlic, onion, garlic, onions, cauliflower, cauliflower. Mm -hmm. coconut, a quarter coconut teaspoon, oil. coconut oil. oil. Yes. Oil. What else? Time. Time. Yeah. What else? Bay leaf. Bay leaf. Oh, you yeah. need to make sure you got the final detail. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, I noticed I'm doing everything all at once. You know why I'm doing everything all at once? Is because now when it comes to plating up time, I can get excited about plating my food. But I'm going to do that bit by bit. I'm just making myself a little bit more tidy so you all can see what I'm doing. I'm going to and have a look at the pot to be able to see what it looks like. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. We've got some people. I'm about to finish. Can you see that? It's a chunky soup that you can have. Now I remove my bay leaf and put it on the side. I need to put both for tomorrow. He says it's in a way, in a way. And if you can see this now, ladies and gentlemen, that's my soup. And what I tend to do with this, can you all hear me? Yes, yeah, sorry, I uh, had a phone call in the middle of the, and I wasn't muted. That looks gorgeous. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. They are seaweed. Come on, y'all. I want you to make sure. Seaweed. And I know there's a lady that's online here who loves these. Her name is Stacy Ann. I know she was on early on making comments. Seaweed. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. And if you wanted to make some non breads and wraps, you can also do that so that you can have uh, some of the seaweed on the top. And if you want to do a finishing touch, you can add a little bit to get a kick, add a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper, just a drizzle over the top, and you got a kick. So ladies and gentlemen, that's your first dish completed. Oh, good Lord. Now, while my, my pie is, is going oh, on, I'm gonna go to something more exotic now. I'm going to go straight to my dessert. Just clean around my tray. Oil. 
My wife always said I got an OCD moment. But it's just me making sure my space, my workspace is clear. Okay, Alvin, there's been a request if you could send the soup to Ada via Uber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have something that is very unique to this evening. And it's one of those that you use. So what I'm about to share with you now is as Louise keeps the camera down, we have some very interesting ingredients on the table. We have blueberries. Um, for those of you who can see very clearly, we have blueberries. We also have uh, milk, soya milk. Very, very clear, that is soya milk. And then you also have a passion fruit. Passion fruit, which you can see right here. And then you have some chia seeds. So back to this again. Open it up so you can have chia seeds. So some homework for you all. What are the components or the nutritional value of chia seeds? You know, they've been big on the market all of a sudden and everybody's jumping up for joy for chia seeds. Every way you got chia put in, you got chia this, chia that, because somebody tell what's a chia seed. Um, you all quiet right now. Now you're talking to me? Do you, do, do you want us to tell you about chia seeds? Yes. Now. I could tell you something. Wonderful. <laughs> tell me. Um, it's very fibrous. So when you add water to it, it has a kind of gelatinous type of consistency. And that's, oh, good, for, good, that's good. good for that's good for cleaning the gut to help with um, like if you're constipated, um, it would help you to become unconstipated. <laughs> <laughs> that's one benefit. There's plenty other. Okay, well, it's also has omega three. Omega, all oh, your yeah, your seeds are high in omega three, definitely. Omega three, black seed. Sorry. <laughs> high in protein. High in protein, that's all of Victoria. And of course the antioxidants. Okay, antioxidants. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna go back to my to my to my recipe right now. So Sharon, if you would like to share the recipe up on the screen for me. So each and every one can have a look at this at the recipe. I'm gonna take it slow. Um, I'm almost done. Ladies and gentlemen, would you believe it? This is three dishes. I'm I'm almost done. Wow. Chai seed is also high in um, omega-3. It's also good in omega-3. That's on like Antoine. Oh, they didn't ask. Yeah, it's me, Uncle Alvin. <laughs> good to have you on the show. Could you screen share for us, Sharon, our, our last uh, dish, our last dish. We're going straight now to this exotic dessert. You notice you have a beautiful light starter, which is in the soup. It is... You know, it's good with the, the, the fiber, it's good with the seaweed. That's a light starter. Then we're going into a heavy main course, and I want to make sure that your dessert is going to be even more lighter. So stay with me as you look at the screen. The ingredients are up on the screen. Can we all see that? Yeah, it's up. Shall I read these out? So it's blueberry chia seed pudding. So ingredients are two tablespoons of chia seeds, quarter of a cup of soy milk, one cup of blueberries, half a cup of extra soy milk and vanilla essence. Mm. Just keeping an eye on my prized possession in the oven. Okay, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. So very carefully, have you put the 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 instructions up also? It's up there already. So you got it. Okay, wonderful. So here we go. As we go back now, my beautiful glass, I have a glass, and I'm gonna put this one, two, and then a little drizzle. 
just a drizzle of vanilla essence. And I'm gonna pour. My soya milk in. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of a swizzle. And then ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna go into the fridge. This one, uh, if you wanna do a cheat sheet and you got guests coming, if you got a good space in your freezer, if you got a, a slide freezer that have shelves, you can put it on a tray and you can put the shorter glasses on that, or you can make some space and put the, the glasses as tall as this on a tray into the freezer. And this would come to a setting point. You don't need it to freeze. You just need it to come to a setting point where the chia seeds begin to expand and become jelly-like. So I'm gonna put this one in the fridge and I'm gonna take the one that I have out earlier so that you'll be able to have a look at that later on. Okay, but while that one is sitting in the fridge, I'm gonna to get to the other part of the ingredient to make the topping for that, which is like a mousse-like structure. So now here we have the blueberries. Now I'm gonna use some of those. And for those of you who are like me, um, I have loads of blueberries. Mm. And where I live, this whole tray cost me four pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just thought I'd share it with you. And for those of you who are still living in the cities and you want to get out of the cities and enjoy some of the country living that I'm enjoying, I have also a box of avocados, the whole box of avocados. And this is beautiful, solid. Um, and that was a pound a box. So I'm just sharing with you some of the benefits of not being in an expensive city. On top of the good air that I'm having, this is some of the quality stuff that I get up here. So I'm sharing with you. Okay? Don't get upset with me, all <laughs> So now I'm just getting my little Nutribullet. I'm going to add my blueberries. Okay, someone just mentioned that um, a mouse is not vegan um just excuse the typo it's it's supposed supposed to say moose not mouse oh, <laughs> oh i'm sorry typographical error <laughs> at least somebody's listening so while we're putting the blueberries up there I'm I'm just trying to move around where my wife has placed my soy milk. Here we have it. So good. I think you've got a few people that want to invite themselves around for dinner, Alvin. Um, there's there's um, some people liking your kitchen, the size of it. Some people wanting to know where you live. Um, oh, no, yeah. That's good. But, but you know what? Only for the press them, page. <laughs> can't give them too much information in case the sun and get a crap. <laughs> but, but they can be filming. They can follow, follow the directions and um, you'll have some. He needs to open a lifestyle center. <laughs> well, we do. We do have the cooking school that's starting tomorrow. Um, Alvin's going to tell us a little bit more about that. Um, when he's done with the cooking. Yeah, I'm gonna switch one of my, switch to one of my uh, machine. This one here. On a show. Okay, a question came up earlier, Alvin. You know when you was using the hand blender for the, um, for the soup? Yes for the um, cauliflower soup. Someone was asking, could they just put all the ingredients in the blender? But I think you wanted to hold back the cauliflower to give it a bit more of a crunch um, or more texture in the soup. But I don't know if you want to address that one. Maybe they prefer their soup to be smooth. Yes, they can use uh, the the hand blender. I was just doing a rough chop for that. They can also do it if, in, if they use it in one of the other uh, Nutribullet or one of those. The reason why I use a hand blender is because of the heat of the soup um, that can uh, damage a a um, the Nutribullet or one of the normal uh, machines that you have. So 
I use that instead. Um, if you got a high powered blender, um, like a Vitamix, then you can do that and you can use that for that. But I tend to use um, the hand blender so I can get a little bit more consistency and I can break it down sufficient for me and I can see exactly what's happening, uh, pulsing it um, at the right rate. So I'm using this as one of my little uh, gadgets here and I'm gonna pulse this on too. Right, so I haven't made this here too runny. I've just made it enough so that I've got like a little bit of a compote. Can you see that? Can we all see that? I'm gonna yeah, we can see that clearly. I know you all salivate and I can see that, Sharon. I'm sorry. You will get a chance to get your taste. So I'm going to bring it over here, ladies and gentlemen. And while I'm bringing it over here, I'm going to take my little friendly one out of the... I'm loving the red in that. And of course, that's going to be good for your blood. So now I want you to understand this is one of the ones that I had sitting in the, in the system earlier. So I'm going to use a little spoon to stir that up a little bit now. Have you noticed that? Is that a passion fruit I can spot next to the glass? Well, yes, you certainly can, Sharon. So you notice now with this, I've now stirring it up. Look at the consistency of this. Look, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Can we all see that, ladies and gentlemen? Can we all see that? Yeah. And when Louise dropped the camera down sideways for me on the side of the glass, you'll be able to see what it looks like. It looks like many little... Can we see that? Can we see that? Yeah, we can see that. It's um, lo lots of black seeds in there. Wonderful. Now I'm going to finish my finishing touches. Louise is just standing over me. She just can't, her mouth is running and she's supposed to be keeping her eyes on the camera. So if she, her, her mouth is running, then you can understand how good it is in the kitchen right now. I can't tell you, the smell, the aromas. Gotta keep an eye on my food in the, in the, in the oven. It's coming up time to plate up. I think we need to be careful because our phones are going to run out of space this week when everybody's doing the cooking and sharing their sharing their images of what they've made. Absolutely beautiful. And then to finish off, I'm just going to add a few of my blueberries that was already washed, and I'm going to add them on the top. And for those of you who want to get more exotic, you can put a sprig of mint leaf on the top of that or on the side, and you have a completed dish. Wiping the rim, my glass. And ladies and gentlemen, that is dish number two. So let's get to the main dish now. And for you who I haven't finished, you know, here it is. Nobody said anything, but here it is. Why do you see Sharon passion fruit? So I'm going to get passionate with you all now. For those ladies out there and those husbands that have not done what they're supposed to do. And for those boyfriends and girlfriends, don't just rely on the boys doing everything for you. Ladies, you got to get used to this also. So I'm asking you to get some of the passion fruit and we're gonna share a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little fork and I'm gonna just scoop up some of my passion fruit. And I'm gonna just drizzle it around. And you can have this from you know, don't tell them everything. <laughs> <laughs> Louise is I think I can have it for breakfast as well. Yes you can have this for breakfast in your breakfast bowl. This is also a good start. You can carry this in your lunch box when you're going to school, when you're going in your kid, kiddies lunch box, and it would be good for them to have at room temperature. So it's also a good dish, nutrient packed, well nourished. So that's dish number two. And last but not least, I'm gonna plate up now. Hopefully I'm gonna have a check on my roast. 
and see what's going on. So that's this number two. And I'm gonna move everything from here. Ladies and gentlemen, look at these beauties. Nice. Can you see You're those? You're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me see. Rose is looking. Put myself down. Towel. Can we see that, ladies and gentlemen? Can we see that? How beautiful is that? Can we see that? Yes, we can. Look at the side of that. The stickiness Mommy, of me. It's nice. <laughs> is that Zach? Send some in the post for me. Send some in the post for you. That's going to be real tricky. So ladies and gentlemen, here we go. I'm using another smaller chopping board. And I'm going to put this over the top. Leave my tray. Take your hands off my stuff. You got to keep out of my kitchen. You just take your eyes on the camera. She can't keep her hands off my stuff. Look at this. You notice I didn't interfere in her kitchen last week. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, ladies and gentlemen? Beautiful. Mm. The smell, the aroma. Can you no, use the berry? No. You, you did tell us, Alvin, that Louise is boss in the kitchen, didn't you? <laughs> Alvin, can we use another berry instead of blueberry? Yes, you can. You can use uh, strawberries. You can use... Uh, Raspberries, you can use any of the berries, it's not, you're not hard and fast for that. Okay, okay thanks. You're welcome. So, so now what I'm about to do, I'm gonna start to tray up my food for you. And using olive oil. Here you have it. You got the coconut oil. You notice it's marinated in here now. It's a little. So I can now toss them around a little bit. So you get a little bit of shine to it. And using. I'm gonna put this a little bit. You can be. Have you seen how all root vegetables? And if you want to add a little bit of a tomato contrast to this, which is a tomato sauce, you can add it over the top. But I just want to show you what it will look like just on its own. Now we're going to go to this magical moment. For this one, see, I have a, I have a double voice in my kitchen. Uh, for, for you, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see this on, on the tray as it is, you normally leave it to rest a while, okay? You leave it to rest a while so that it's a little bit more stiff. But I'm going to attempt to do something that I don't normally do, and that is to cut it early so you can have a look of what's on the inside. 
Is that your disclaimer, Alvin, in case it falls apart? No, not at all. <laughs> it's not a disclaimer. I wish I could be there, though. That, that, I, I'm really going to have to make make this one. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Over the holiday period, that's going to be on my um, menu. Excuse me, Calvin. Yes, hello, Soraya. Can you send me the ingredients? Can I send you the ingredients? It would be my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to have a look at this. Look how beautiful that looks. You notice that? So while you understand now where well, you need it to rest a little bit, can we all see that? I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so Louise can show you. Can you see that? Can you stop doing that? That's just making me too hungry. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> people are people are saying, what would you do for gravy to have with it? You can you can do various things. You can do a tomato concast, which is uh, tomatoes, vine tomatoes, and you can chop those and have those marinated, um, toss them gently with a little bit of herbs, and that can go over the top. Or you can also make an onion gravy, which is basically uh, onions uh, with a few herbs, and you just caramelize that into a pan, and you can make the finishing touches for that. I'm just cutting this gently because it hasn't slipped. So I'm just... One second. And just before I do that, I'm going to just use a little bit of uh, olive oil. In my, and a little bit of my liquid aminos. Can I just, while we're waiting, um, just to let people know who have missed the um, cooking, who have only just joined us later, this is the third dish. So the first one was a cauliflower. I'm sure Alvin will show us at the end. Okay, so this was a little bit of my liquid aminos, and it's yeah. Bragg's aminos. Yeah. So what I'll do with this now, just to give my dish for those who are asking. So that's a little bit of liquid aminos, a little bit of olive oil, just a little bit. My veg. Then I'm going to put the Now I'm going to finish with something that I love to use a lot. My finishing touches. A little bit of cayenne pepper. Kind of around the dish. And then a drizzle of your kind over the top. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is my finishing dish. So you have three dishes in a row. Three dishes in a row. And as I said, if you have a tomato concast on top, which is tomato that is being blitzed and poured over the top, it would absolutely look decadent. So I'm going to put these three dishes up so you can have a look at them in a better stead. Can we all see this? See that? 
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the Golden Palms Health is Wealth Kitchen. It's been a pleasure serving you all. And uh, woo, I hope you're ready to join me in the kitchen in the next coming weeks and also tomorrow live at around 1500 hours, three o'clock GMT, we'll be able to do some more exotic and exciting dishes. Um, how to eat sweet without the meat. So here is it, ladies and gentlemen. I've taken my time with this one. This dish can actually be done in less, um, but I've taken my time so that you can see exactly what I've done. If I've increased the number of vegetables and I've also increased the number of the, the dish, I can serve at least four people, uh, depending on how greedy some folks are. <laughs> <laughs> I can serve at least four people out of this um, um, portion, more than four people, at least six people out of this roast. Um, and of course, you increase the vegetables and that's a whole thing for the family. If you want to add a green salad on the side of that, you can also do so. So I can quickly do show you what that can happen. But it can look like this very quickly. I'll just do something really, really fast, extremely fast. I'm going to get myself a quick just struggling to hear you a little bit, Alvin. You're struggling to hear me? Okay. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Okay, I'm just going to share the spinach with you and show you how you can actually finish this dish. That is very nice. It's very nice. I Where's, that little, choose. Where's that little voice coming from? It's coming from the back. <laughs> and Louise is getting happy in my kitchen right now. Okay, I'm gonna move this aside so you can see what I'm doing. So I've chopped one of my avocados. I've just opened it up a little bit. So I can get this open and I'm just gonna chop it up real fine for you. Just roughly chop. And I'm gonna intermingle it in, crush it a little bit in between. It's so delicious. And then again, I can just add a little bit more of my liquid aminos. My eyes little, can't take off this. And a little squeeze of my lemon juice. Always keep your hands where the seeds does not go in. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Finishing touch. You can also do this with kale. My eyes Very healthy. My eyes are trying to eat that, but I'm not succeeding. This is looking so good, Alvin. I've just looked down on my plate and I've seen a couple of olives on there. Was you going to tell us something about some olives? Yes, you can also add olives to this. So I want you all to tell me about olives. Is there a place where we can get some, like, um, uh, na uh, organic olives and olive oils from? Isn't yes, there, there is. For most, of the, for most of these, I'll be able to place on the, in, the, in the chat or hopefully on the group. I'll be able to share some of the suppliers that you all can order online and you can get bulk, um, especially right now in this, uh, this season where things are about to get a little bit more expensive when you come out of Brexit in the United Kingdom. Uh, I want to be able to share that with you, some sites that you can go online and purchase uh, from Amazon and also from eBay. But I'll give you some reputable sites, some reputable brands that you can also choose. And you can buy that in bulk if you are in a, uh, a neighborhood of a community where some of you all are pretty much together then you can go uh, Dutch, as they would say, and you can share the load and just split it amongst yourself. It's all community camaraderie, and that's something that you also can use. So ladies and gentlemen, you're seeing that this dish, if I had to chop all of the rolls and put it on this, on this, uh, this platter here, you can do so. There was something that, there was something, can you all hear me? 
can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Some there people love the sound. Okay, there was something that I was about to do also today, but um, which I slowed down on doing. You can use your red cabbage also to chop the red cabbage and you can then put your spinach and you can put your uh, avocados or see, and the, the, the avocados that you know is good fats. You've got your spinach. Can you tell me what's on the spinach? Anybody has spinach? You've got your red um, uh, cabbage, which is also an antioxidant, which you also got good iodine inside of your red cabbage. So those are some of the things that you can add to colorfully increase and nourish your body with the uh, cruciferous vegetables that you have on the uh, on the tray that I have right here. So uh, ladies um, and gentlemen, this is three dishes. Um, I've taken my time with them. If I went high speed into the kitchen, you will see the different head to head with Louise and myself. And, um, and you are gonna see that I think on the fourth week when we are going head to head with Stephanie, it will be Louise, Stephanie and myself. And we got approximately 15 minutes each to turn around some high speed dishes. And that's when you will see how we move. <clears throat> But that's after Stephanie's uh, third session, which is next next week, uh, Saturday evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, thank you for joining us for in the Help Is Wealth Kitchen. Uh, this is Alvin and Louise over and out. So, I'm opening up for question time right now. Thank you so much, Alvin and Louise. Um, we really appreciated that, and. Um, Looking forward to making some of these dishes for myself. I'm sure the other people in the, oh, the rest of our viewers are going to be putting their culinary skills to use this week. Um, so before you go, please. Sharon, let me give them the homework um, so that I can get straight into the question time. So the homework for, for each and every one of you is to actually create, uh, you can create a soup of your own kind. And I want you to look at the nutritional value of the soup, but I want you to recreate this dish. Um, for those of you who, as you said, cannot do um, uh, 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 nuts, you can have lentils. You got green lentils out there. You got red lentils out there. You can do that as a replacement for the nuts and you can add that with mm -hmm. seeds. But I would like to see you all recreate this dish in a fashion according to your liking. And I want to see some beautiful pictures. Now, I was... Uh, very saddened today to realize that the ladies have outdone the men. And, uh, you know, in the catering world, it's the men that rules the roost, not the ladies. So, ladies, I'm encouraging you um, to really put your steam on. But for the men, don't let me down. You know, <laughs> in my kitchen, <laughs> in my kitchen, I want to make sure that I can see some masculine food coming out so that the ladies can say that their husbands or their sons <laughs> or their brothers, or their uncles, or cousins have done some amazing food for them um, this week coming up. So just before the show next week, I want to see you all doing some amazing food. Put it on the chat, on the men's chat. I want to see those ingredients. I want to see the, the nutritional value to those dishes. And uh, enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. <clears throat> Over to you, Chef. Okay, Alvin, that has been a fa I'm sure people will not disagree that that has been a fabulous, thank you, Maxine, that that has been a fabulous um, show this week with the three meals that we can add to our collection of vegetarian, tasty vegetarian dishes. What was it called today? Um, indulgent Delights? Yes. So... Yeah, you didn't you didn't let us down, Alvin, at all. So thank you so much. And Louise, it's a double act here. I appreciate without Louise's photography skills or videography skills, we wouldn't be able to see this. So thank you so much. Now people have been asking. Um, oh, before we go over, take any questions, just to remind people of the disclaimer that uh, the information that we're showing, the videos and everything, is for informational purposes, educational purposes. And if you are under a GP, doctor, general practitioner, um, medical expert, please seek their advice before um, making any changes that may affect your medication. So if you're taking medication, please, please be careful and seek medical advice before making these changes. 
Um, however, back to one side, um, the cooking school, people have been asking, how do I sign up for it? Where do I make the payments, etc.? Do I need to put that slide back up or do you want us to talk around yes. that one, Alvin? Yes, certainly. What you can do, Sharon, if you can put the slide back up for me and you can have, when you put the slide back up, you'll be able to see uh, the details and how the process works. You go on to our site, it says book now and it will be done through Stripe mm -hmm. um, uh, or Eventbrite. Um, there should be two factions up there. Uh, my technical team was speaking to me um, concerning this. So you'll be able to go on there and once you have booked and you have paid, then we'll send uh, the ingredient list out for you. We're not going to be showcasing until 1500 hours tomorrow afternoon. You'll have your Zoom ID um, to get in on that. Um, it is 25 pounds for the uh, for the one and a half hours. And of course, we'll be doing, um, you'll get some additional stuff that we have not put up there um, as a treat. And that's for the whole month of, uh, every Sunday, the, the rest of the Sundays for this month, as we begin to populate the site over the next number of weeks. So you can have, um, uh, there's going to be uh, courses coming up for single moms. Um, so we will have courses coming up for single moms, which will be cost effective. We'll have family courses where uh, people will be involved. So while we're repopulating and getting the site into uh, this new COVID friendly um, mentality, away from the main restaurant that we had and the cookery school that we had, um, that we had a put through a closure in March and we are now going Zoom. Um, I wanted to make sure that nobody's missed out and that everybody's catered for. So there'll be varied prices along the way for, for the single moms, um, for the widows, for those who are on, uh, on uh, you know, benefits or social uh, income at this particular point in time who, you know, we'll cater for everybody. And we want you to share your concerns with us um, of course, uh, we can't give it all away because it's going to actually you're going to have to purchase the ingredients yourself. And also to keep the school going, we need to make sure that we are funded so everybody can have some of these beautiful dishes. But we are trying to be as flexible and as best as possible. Um, as I would say back in the day with a Robin Hood, um, those from the wealthy corporate environments that will be then paying the bigger prices. We're hoping to fuel that down to be able to facilitate for those who are less fortunate. So. Um, share, 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 um, join us. Um, and this is gonna be going international. And last but not least, all of the, the dishes that we're doing here and we're showcasing, we're hoping to have them all uh, translated into Spanish, French, uh, Portuguese, and German um, uh, by the end of the course. So at the end of December, we're hoping to have all of those dishes translated into these different languages that you can actually utilize them. Uh, with the ingredients, etc. So please stay with us. Uh, please continue to uh, to enjoy the show. And uh, that's me again, over and out. So look at this the, the flyer. You've got the the Zoom uh, uh, information there. Uh, there's a number there if you have any issues. Um, the number's not on at this particular point in time, obviously because it'd be on by tomorrow morning. Will you be able to contact us with all the information that you need? but it is all there, all the information. Take a snapshot of it, click on your, your computer right now or go on your phone and you'll be able to see where the book it says book now. Thank you all. Okay, Alvin, um, the cost being 25 pounds, if they go on the website to book, is it through Eventbrite? Yes, it should, uh, I believe the technical team has told me it's um, to Eventbrite and Stripe, I believe. So there's two um, platforms up there um, I haven't, um, they only notified me again last night. We were having some glitches. Um, and of course, uh, being that it was a Sabbath, I could not address those. So I will revisit again tonight. But any problems that you all have in any way, shape, size, or form, uh, please call the number. Um, I would open the lines even tonight so that you all can be able to get accessibility to me um, within the next hour uh, and or so. And I would open those lines up until approximately 2100 hours, nine o'clock. And then it'll be open again in the morning. So with any, any uh, troubles or challenges that you all have with booking anything online, uh, please get back to me. The site, as I said, we've just gone through a few little glitches. Um, so uh, bear with us, but we wanna make sure you get the best experience when you come on board. So uh, go have a look, go sign up. See you tomorrow, 1500 so hours. Did you say how many um, dishes there'll be, you'll be demoing tomorrow? Yeah, there'll be three dishes that we'll be demoing Wait. tomorrow. 
Thank you. Um, one of them um, is going to be a soup again, as we, we're doing a beautiful starter again, an amazing soup tomorrow. I'm not saying much about that. We'll be also doing another dish, uh, a little similar to what we've done today, but then we're going to have something a little bit more tantalizing uh, for those ladies um, who love to be uh, treated with delicacy. Uh, we're going to have something very special for you tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so gentlemen, um, start booking for yourself and for your, for your family, your sisters, your moms. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alvin. I mean, the cost is £25. If you were to go out for a meal, um, a, a, a high quality meal for the family, I think you'd be paying quite a bit more than £25. And don't forget, these skills that you learn, you can use them time and time again and improve as you um, as your skills improve. I'm sure the tastes will continue to um, delight many taste buds. So thank you so much for that, Alvin. I want to just to Sharon, there's something else I also want you to let you know, for those of you who are asking about olive oil, we have a, a, a very close uh, friend of ours. He is now running a special farm in Spain and he has a large shipment um, that is brought in to the United Kingdom. Um, so if you need to get those as well, we'll um, have them posted into the WhatsApp group. Um, amazing oils, olive oil, directly from his farm. And also he would be having uh, olive leaves and it'll be, be olives also. So there'll be a number, a contact number for you to get that information on. And the team hopefully will place that all in the WhatsApp group. Um, it is based in Spain. Um, he is originally, and his wife is, uh, is from Jamaica, but they were living here in the United Kingdom for a very lengthy period of time. And he has transformed his health and he's been pleased to announce that now he's in Spain having his own vineyard and he'd be able to produce some of the best quality stuff that you would ever have. So they've got shipments in, in the United Kingdom right now. So I'm just throwing a, a, this is a commercial break to let you all know that the oils are available to you. And uh, once you get the contact number, they'll be able to give you all the pricing. Uh, amazing oils. Uh, hopefully by next week, I would have my own bottle in um, here ready to showcase some of that. It was a little uh, delayed at this point in time, but yes, looking forward to that. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, then. Thank you so much. Obviously, um, those that are further afield, they may not be able to get access to the oils, you know, being an international um, Zoom platform. But yeah. those that are in Spain or in the UK, um, you, you will be able to get hold of that. Um, Question. I have, I have um, sorry, I have said that the cost of the sessions for the cooking class is £25 per class. I'm sure I'm correct with that. Yes, it is. £25 per class. Thank you. Yes. Okay, do we have any other questions? Janine, is there anything that's come up in the chat that we need to address? Yes, yeah, so, so I think a few people have joined late and they're asking how they can get the recipe for the dishes today. So just to remind everyone that we do have a YouTube channel so this session will be posted on the YouTube channel. So it's True Temperance International. Um, and you can go back and revisit previous sessions in addition to seeing this session as well. Um, and we also do have a question about the chia seeds. So someone's asking, are chia seeds the same as sweet basil seeds? Chia seeds and sweet basil seeds, no. short and sweet <laughs> um okay mm -hmm. <laughs> and i think um they're also asking about the health benefits but i think we went through the fact that cheese seeds have omega-3 um they help if you are constipated they're full of fiber um etc and then there is another question i don't know if emma a is still on the line because I, I can't quite understand the question i think it is what else can you use if you can't have any form of milk for the pudding. I think that's what she's asking. If you can't have any form of milk? Yeah, um, for the chia pudding. Um, when you, you can use water and um, if you use the, the water in the thing and you just put the, the, uh, the vanilla essence um, and so forth in, inside of that, you can still have the consistency. It's basically the chia seed is just the base and then you can put the other things on top. Okay. 
Um, and then also, so I know that you use chestnuts in the roast and a lot of people do use mushrooms as well. So someone's asking, do we advocate the use of mushrooms? There's a lot of um, uh, questions surrounding mushrooms um, and various types of mushrooms um, being a fungi. And from time to time, I see this question uh, comes up. Um, realistically, we very rarely um, have the question come up, but I haven't really done any massive, uh, tremendous amount of studies on the mushrooms to be able to give you a, a conclusive answer at this particular point in time. So uh, that was be some homework also for me, uh, for me to go back and look at um, the, the full uh, values of those in pertaining to the new upgraded stuff that's out there. In the catering world, it's been used, utilized a lot for flavors um, and they have different types, uh, but I cannot really give you a definitive answer on that at this particular point in time. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions about the cooking school starting tomorrow. So I'm just wondering, because there, there's quite a few, whether um, you've got a contact that people can contact you on directly. Um, yes. That's there, should be, there should be a number um, on the flyer or directly on the website. So if you go directly on the website, in the top of the website, there should be a number right at the top. Okay, thank you. And also another question about coconut oil. So someone's asking, is coconut liquid oil as good as the solid? Uh, the, the solidity uh, of the coconut oil is down to the temperature of the room. If you are at this temperature right now, it will be set. It's, 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 it's a solid. If you're in a canteen, of course, it would be a huh? little uh, more runny. And then, yeah. of course, you can get some that are already yeah. like that. Okay, I can't see any of the questions in the chat, so I don't know if anyone um, on the line wants to ask a question. Yeah, can I just ask a quick question? It's Selena Medford from Birmingham. Jenny Devil's, uh, oh, Jenny Devil, Jenny McClymon's cousin. Um, <laughs> just a quick question. Hi, cuz, how are you doing? I'm um, good, base, good. good, good. <laughs> um, just a quick question. Um, I noticed you've got three cooking sessions um, taking place. Are they three different cooking sessions or are they a repeat of each one? No, every, every cooking session, you have a different menu mm -hmm. um, and it will be always a three course menu and every dish is going to be different. Brilliant, thank you. No problem at all. Okay, this is, this is CJ and I'm still asking the question about the Almino sauce. Can you buy it or how do you make it please? Can, this is a full bottle, so you can look at it. This is Bragg's Amino. Yeah, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I can. Okay. So therefore, you can get this online. Um, when you go on Amazon or possibly eBay, you can get it. Uh, pretty cost effective. Um, to utilize, or you can sometimes get it. Uh, Holland and Barrett. Uh, in the UK um, that I'm familiar with. Um, but mostly, as I said, because I buy a lot of stuff by bulk, I would get most of my stuff online. If I go to Holland Barrett at any given point in time, that's it. For those in the United States, again, this is a US product, so you can get it almost anywhere um, in the United States. And also on, uh, what is the other uh, place in Germany? You may be also be able to get that for those in Germany. And I believe all so you'll be able to get it in Spain. Uh, but it's the Bragg's Amino. Oh. Much appreciated, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Yeah, so we've got a question about soy. Um, and a lot of people are talking about not to use too much soy. Would we, would we agree with that? Okay, in terms of with everything that you deal with, um, if you go look at the studies around soya beans and your estrogen levels, um, if you're taking uh, anything like soya and you're taking it in high consistencies, you gotta be mindful of your estrogen, um, the, the, your, the effects in your estrogen. But again, it's the oil, the soya that you're using, there's several types of soya outside and on the planet, or should I say on the shops. Some of them are 
uh, destructive soil, which was the Monsanto ones. And most of those you can't find in the United Kingdom due to the laws. So Monsanto was not allowed to sell those um, here and in most of the European countries. But as I said, I'll be able to put some of those things up online and give you some study. But ladies and gentlemen, also I encourage you that when you're looking at things, anytime you go to the food store or anytime that you're about to put something on your plate, if you're a family member um, or if you're just really serious about your health, you need to make sure that everything that you put, do not just follow a cultural ideal, do not just eat food because it tastes good and that is how it was done from way back. And you need to look at some of the lifestyle diseases that are coming down for those that were originated from the Caribbean, from Africa, from Asia, even right here in the United Kingdom and those in the United States, I mean, in the US, um, I can't say it enough. There's some crazy stuff in the US um, for, the, for my audience back in, in New York City and Jacksonville and Washington. You know, you've got a lot of MSGs there. You also have it here. And um, for those who are constantly making fried foods and fried things and all the rest of it, please, 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 please realize that your health is wealth. You only get one shot at the title. You only get one chance. Be careful what you put into here because it would affect all of this. And by the way, as I said, uh, for those of you who have never heard me say that before, this abdomen, the gut, is the second brain. What goes on in here affects the entire uh, anatomy. You got 11 systems of the human physiology, your circulatory system, your respiratory system, your endocrine system, which is dealing with all of your organs. All the food that you put in here can have a serious impact on those. Um, your central nervous system, all of these can be impacted just by the wrong foods and the wrong preparation of foods that can also do that. The pots that you're cooking in aluminum, you need to get rid of those because they have a uh, knock-on effect. You also have different uh, the, the oils, which we talked about before, and some of you are still researching, and I want to do this. I, I was going to talk about oils tonight, but I'm going to do that at the end, the very end, because I want to give you all some more time to do some homework and take responsibility and accountability for your health. So don't just go listen to what anybody just says. Even if I say it, go check it out and make sure that anything that is going to affect you and affect your family, you completely leave it out, because health is well. So I want to thank you very much for, um, for, for taking time to actually go study it. And I'm going to encourage that show after show after show and class after class. You only get one chance. Enjoy that moment. Life at its best was hell as well. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Alvin. Um, I think we can let you have a rest now. You've been on your feet for a while. And um, there's some nice food in there waiting for you in that kitchen. So uh, we don't want it to get cold. <laughs> and for, for Stacy and Keisha and all of those who, um, yes, I, uh, the extra glass um, that was there for you guys. Um, yeah, sorry you guys are so far away. Miss you all, love you all. Uh, but I'll enjoy it on your behalf and I'll tell you how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Thank you all at PPI. Thank you, audience, for, for watching. See you all next week where you'll be visited by Stephanie all the way from uh, Canada. And she'll be uh, showcasing some beautiful dishes. I don't know what she'll be cooking yet, but I know it's going to be good. Um, but sign on, same time, same place uh, on the TTI show. This is Alvin and Louise at a Golden Palm Health is Well Kitchen. Over and out. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Louise. Bye. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you, everyone, for joining us. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Uh, Thanks very much. Take care. Bye, Come and check your message in your box, oh, okay? Oh, oh, Seen it, Jenny. Seen it. I will get back to you. Yeah, yeah. Lovely seeing you on here again.